Hello and welcome to this presentation on how to do multiple imputation in M+. Multiple imputation is useful when you have missing data and you want to handle the missing data appropriately, meaning you don't want to throw cases away. And so in M+, multiple imputation is a two-step process. Here I'm going to show you um, part one first. In part one, you create your imputed data sets, for example, you create 50 imputed data sets that then you analyze in the second step. And so this phase here is used to generate those imputed data sets based on uh, variables that play a role, variables that have missingness and variables that might be related to missingness. So you can see here that in this input file, I have uh, use variable specified and I have uh, a data imputation command where I tell M plus first of all which variables have missing data and for which variables do I want to impute missing values that's given here in the impute subcommand. I also tell M plus how many imputed data sets I want to generate. It's recommended that we use about 50 or more. Sometimes it can be better to use a little more and then those 50 imputed data sets will be saved with this um, variable name that I choose here. In this case, I called this um, called these files memory underscore imputed and you can see there's a little star here at the end. The star will be replaced by M plus with a number running from one to 50 because M plus will generate 50 imputed data sets all with different imputed values and so you'll have a whole bunch of files and in addition M plus will also generate a list file that contains the names of those 50 imputed data sets so that they then in the second step can be read by M plus can be accessed and analyzed. So in this um, part of the imputation, we're only generating those imputed data sets. We're not actually analyzing the data other than that we generate descriptive statistics here with the type equals basic option. So let's run this and take a look at what we get for this. You can see it's pretty fast. There's a small imputation with just two variables. And um, so this doesn't take very long. One thing that's important to mention is that in the use variables list, you want to have, you want to include all variables that might be related to missingness or that might be related to your outcome variables with missingness, meaning you want to include any auxiliary variables that you may have identified previously, meaning variables that are correlated with missing data. And in this case, those might be the memory one, subjective well-being, SWB one and Z variables that might be variables measured at a previous time point that might explain why people dropped out. So meaning why people have missingness on these time two variables memory two and subjective well-being two. So it's really important to make sure you include those variables in the imputation phase so that the imputed values can be as accurate as possible and, and can be unbiased. And so then, so say the previous step would have been to first of all find out which variables are relevant for missingness, which variables might be correlated with missingness or which variables might be correlated with these outcome variables here. So let's take a look at the output you can see that we requested 50 imputed data sets. Those are called replications by M plus and 50 were also completed. So there was not any kind of obvious problem here. So they could all be completed, which is a good thing. And then other than that, you get the missing data information for the first data set, which is kind of trivial because there is no missing data now because the values have been imputed. So I don't really know why M plus gives this, but it means that there isn't any, I guess if you didn't, if you hadn't imputed all the variables, then maybe there would be missingness on some of the other variables. So that could happen, but now we have only complete data because we imputed both variables in that case that did have missing data. So the covariance coverage then is also 100% in this um, data set. And then more interesting are the results of the basic analysis for the imputed data sets because those are already pooled estimates across those 50 data sets. So M plus 
calculated the descriptive statistics in each of the imputed data sets and then averaged them or pooled them together. And so that's what you're seeing here. So you get the pooled um, or averaged means for the variables, the covariances and the correlations. And so you can check those for plausibility and for whether everything looks good. Other than that, at the very end, you get some information about the imputation um, in terms of technical information, it relies on Bayesian estimation. And so you get this potential scale, scale reduction factor here as one indication of how that worked, whether that worked well. And you can see this PSR value here is close to one, which it should be. So there uh, doesn't seem to be an issue in this case with the imputations. You also get saved data information where the file name is memory underscore imputed and then the star will be replaced by a number. We can take a look at these um, data sets as well. So you can see that they were all generated and then M plus tells you the order of the variables in that saved data file. So you can be sure that once you read the data back into M plus that those will be read in the correct um, order. So let's take a quick look at those imputed data sets. You can see that they end up in the same folder in which you have your um, input syntax file. <clears throat> and then you see that M plus generated 50 of those running from one to 50. And then at the very end, you also get the imputed list file, which just simply has the variable, uh, has, simply has the um, file names of those 50 files so that M plus then can read those files for the analysis. Now the next step is in M plus to actually do the analysis and that's a separate input file which in this case I estimated a two-wave autoregressive cross-leg panel path model where I predicted memory two and subjective well-being two by the time one variables with autoregressive and cross-legged effects. And so now in this analysis phase, I need M plus to read my imputed data sets and analyze each data set and then pool the estimates across those 50 data sets. And you will see that this is actually pretty straightforward because M plus does all the work for you in a single input file. So all we need to do is here, we need to specify in the data command that the file name is memory underscore imputed list dot dot. So rather than listing all the 50 files, which would be really tedious, you just, you just give M plus the list file and then M plus will look at that list file and will determine the, ver the uh, um, data file names and then find those data files in the same folder and then use them for the analysis. Now, how does M plus know that there will be multiple data files to analyze? First of all, in that list file, M plus will see, oh, that's not actually a data file, but that's just a list of data file names. And then second, we also specify type equals imputation here, and that tells M plus, okay, it's not a single data file, it's uh, multiple data files that I need to fit this model to. Other than that, we just specify our use variables for the model as usual. Note that at this phase, we're not specifying any auxiliary variables anymore because any auxiliary variables that might explain missingness were already taken care of, were already used in the imputation phase. And that's important. That's really important to in the imputation phase, include all the auxiliary variables that may be relevant to missingness. Here we're only using the variables now and nothing else, only the variables that are in our statistical model. And then below we specify the statistical model as we would usually. Um, it's a cross-leg panel model, so it consists of two regression equations because we have two dependent variables. I also requested estimation of the exogenous variable means, variances, and the time one covariance, as well as the residual covariance between the residuals for the time two variables. And then you run your model as usual. You can see it takes a little bit longer because M plus has to fit the model to all these 50 data sets, which can take a little bit if you have many variables or if you have a complex model, then that might take a little bit of time, but it's usually fast. And then in your output file, 
you can check again that the model was successfully fit to all replications, which it may not be. If you have a complex model, then maybe for some of the data sets it didn't converge or something like that. You would see that here, but in our case with a simple path model, um, all 50 replications worked just fine. All imputed data sets were used. You also get the sample statistics, again, averaged across the 50 imputed data sets. So you can take a look at those and make sure everything looks good. You get model fit information also pooled across those 50 data sets. You almost don't see that this is a model that was fit to multiple data sets. You can see in this case, the chi-square test here is not relevant because there's a saturated model. But if you had a non-saturated model, you would get a regular chi-square and degrees of freedom and p-value. And then the model results are given pretty much as normal. So you can look at the estimates, the point estimates. You can take a look at the standard errors. You can take a look at p-values for tests of significance. And so pretty much everything looks like normal. You don't have to do the pooling and plus does the pooling for you. And so this is a really convenient way to address missing data. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have other things that you would like to see explained about M+, please leave a comment and I'll see you next time.